turn it over to Lady Leoden to teach us about um, the duties of the MOC. Okay. Hi guys, I'm Lady Leoden and I've been an MOC for almost 10 years now. Um, when I first, I had, I've been in the SCA almost 11 years. When we, uh, when I first joined, there really didn't seem to be a whole lot for kids. That's kind of why I, kind of stepped up and said, hey, I'll be a MOC, and it just kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> um, you know, at, if you're a minister of children, uh, think about the reasons why you decided to become that minister of children. What, what, what was it? What was it for you? You know, uh, for me, my kids were still younger. They're now, you know, grown and almost out of my house and uh uh you know so i wanted them to have something to do um and you know it was just you every two years it was just like okay nobody else wants to do this fine i'll do it again um <laughs> and it just you know trying to keep pace with the kids you know as they're learning and growing and you know it's uh you know presenting stuff to them you know and asking them uh about you know what their interests are within the sca um um you know um we are you know we're teachers um and historically the um our role as as the teacher would be either the nurse or the governess or um the the tutor within the noble household um um you know and so we help to bring up the next generation to continue uh to continue the line um you know and in our society we are there to help spark interest in the arts and sciences uh, because we have youth marshals and stuff like that that, you know, take care of all of those activities. Um, so, you know, I hear a lot of people will say that, you know, well, I don't want to be, you know, an MOC or the, the MOC is just the babysitter. We're not, if you see the MOC as a babysitter, then you see your child's teacher as a babysitter which you know yes it gives some the kids something to do but we are teaching um and you know i, I try to be m myself i i try to think about it how a five-year-old would view the project would it be too hard for me would it be um challenging but still fun um you know I, myself, I don't expect Laurel level work from a five-year-old. <laughs> um, and it's always much better to, um, you know, let them use their imagination, let them be curious. Um, you know, kind of let them lead you and so that you can see through their eyes, you know, how they're viewing your project um let's see um research 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 re you're doing laurel level research in this role <laughs> um i mean like there isn't a moment 
where I'm not thinking of something new. And then I go, well, is that period? And if it's period, then okay, how do I do it? So I learn the adult level. And then it's like, okay, how do I break this down? And um, I've actually put together a, a series of videos um, for, you know, the kids. Um, I also have written a book on children's activities, you know, to help new MOCs get started. Um, you know, but there's so many other resources out there. Um, you know, and Google is my friend. <laughs> Google should be everybody's friend, you know, and, and the library and expert. Ah! <gasps> Lost my earphone. <sighs> um, you know, uh, you know, the kingdom has uh, a page school set up. The corporate, uh, SCA corporate has um, the, the Yaffa program set up. Um, there's, you know, other teachers within the kingdom that would be willing to help you learn what you need to learn in order to be able to break it down and uh, teach the kids. I'm right now trying to learn how to make a drum. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's just, there's, there's so much out there and YouTube, you, there's so much out there on YouTube, you know, learn how to do a thing. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Cause I mean, it's just one of those, I, I really don't know this. I've done this class once, one, one other time about three years ago. And it was, it was a lot of fun because of course people and we could play games and I'm really five years old. <laughs> I have, I have several questions. I hope you don't mind. Sure. No, not at all. So um, one, how do you account or what do you do when you're trying, you know, you're going to have a diverse age group of kids attending your event? How do you manage your activities? Well, I break it down um, to the level of a five-year-old and then expand it from there. I mean, because a nine-year-old can do more than a five-year-old. Most of mine generally range from the age of five to about 10 or 11. Okay. Because by 12, they're, uh, they're interested in teen stuff and they don't, you know, they don't really want to do kitty crafts. And while they're not kitty crafts, that's how the 12-year-old views it. Um, <clears throat> The, um, you know, I try to find a mid range. I've had a two year old be able to sew a, um, a, a little bean bag, but that's an unusual two year old. Um, it's getting, you know, getting to know your kids, and yes, you're going to have some that come in from out of uh, your barony, your shire, you know, out of town. Um, but knowing that they're at this level, you can kind of say, well, why don't you take it a step further? Um, inspire in them the, in a, a curiosity, you know, to take it a step further. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> it kind of does. It tells me uh, 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 age range and kind of a start and cutoff point. And yeah. Try, yeah. And you're trying to go for somewhere in the middle, but people yeah. above that and below that could still do it. 
And like mm-hmm. you said, the two-year-old was the exception, not the rule. But that doesn't right. mean that, you know, someone younger can't enjoy it or to at least try it. And um, so what is, and, and maybe you'll take this on later, and maybe I should stop asking questions. <laughs> there is no such thing as a dumb question. <laughs> well, okay. So, um cat knows uh, that I will ask you questions to death. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you are five. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, it's a, uh, it's a, I, I am coming back after not playing for a long time. So I'm trying to catch up sure. and learn as much as I can. So, okay, here we go. So one, what is the hardest thing about what you do now? I know what it used to be 15, 20 years ago, but been a while since I played. Keeping so I just... up with the kids. The hardest thing is keeping up with what they want to do and mm-hmm. what they want to learn. Um, you know, and there's so much electronic out there and, you know, that creeps in. Mm-hmm. Um, but at events, you know, it's, you know, you, there is kind of this unspoken rule, no electronics. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you have to you say, eh, put it away because we're doing this right now. Um, but, you know, keeping their interest because they're so used to this instant gratification culture. Um, so that's really what makes it the hardest. Uh, I used to work at the Science Museum uh, here in Oklahoma City, and they taught me a lot. <laughs> um, you have about 30 seconds to get a kid's attention. You've got to have a gotcha um, in order to get their attention and get them interested in what you're doing. And sometimes that's hard, especially when they come in and they're not interested in doing anything at all mom's just dropping the mom or dad are just dropping them off because mom and dad want to go and do their thing okay so here's another question and Mm -hmm. if you need to go on with your class please do don't let me stop you if you want to keep going because you'll probably get to the to the questions i have but i'm impatient and i want to ask my questions Aha, yes, you are five. <laughs> <laughs> well, not five anymore, but I try to act young, so, you know. <laughs> well, that's part of it, is, is really being, uh, I try to keep with the mentality of being five when I'm with the kids, because then I can see the world from, from their eyes. Mm-hmm. And um, it... <sighs> an innate curiosity about the world. You're, you're big enough to do a lot of things mm-hmm. and you're still little enough to, you know, to want a snuggle every now and then. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, you, you know, you know, touch base with mom and mm-hmm. go off and do your thing type thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but just being curious about the world and looking at it, from that standpoint. So, okay, so here's my, uh, this is my next question and my last one for a while. And that is, <laughs> if you had your way, okay, how much would you actually ask to be budgeted for MOC activities at each event that you, that you think would the kids would have a blast. Anybody who would come would have fun. And it would be money well spent, not only for the, the group, but of course for the kids and their parents. So, oh, sure. But I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, you can't wish for, you know, $1,000 or something that, you know. Oh. What would be, a, a, you would think would be a realistic amount that, you know. A realistic you, amount. Yeah. The... Um, I'm going to reference 40th year because uh, I was the MOC, uh, the, the, the head chaos in charge. Um, I got $500. 
And, and that was a three day event, right? Yes. Okay. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. We ended up not doing anything on Sunday because it was raining taxi cabs. Right. Um, <laughs> um, but $500 did a lot. And we had an absolute blast. I mean, we had a fairy ball. We had, um, we had talk like a pirate day where we uh, went out and searched for buried treasure. Well, it wasn't very buried, but, <laughs> um, we, uh, built sailboats. Yes, it was pool noodles, but you know, you, I allowed them to experiment with, with different things. Um, they learned how to play the recorder and, you know, they, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, and they all got to play an actual recorder. Um, it was just, it was a lot of fun and I managed to come in under $500. Okay. All right, I'm done for now, so I'll go back on mute. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? I do. So sure, for sure. my Shire, we ha currently have one child who doesn't show up very often. What mm -hmm. would you suggest in looking for things that, if, what, if and when we are allowed to go out into public again, um, <laughs> that may... <laughs> Like, what kind of things would you do at, um, oh gosh, what's the names? Um, Show-offs and things like that to attract children and therefore their parents. Um, well, for the last several years, um, probably the last maybe seven years, we've had uh, children's activities demoed at our, at our uh, medieval fair. And you know, do make and takes. Make and takes are, are fast. They're easy. Uh, in fact, I have a whole bunch of them. And, I, you know, if you all want to message me through the event page, uh, then I can send you the links to all of these things that, I'm talk that I've talked about. Um, I, set, I wrote a book on uh, a guide to children's activities for you know doing in the mud mundane world you know for um uh demos and stuff one it you know and it gives a little bit a little bit of history behind each of the projects um it actually came out of a nano nano rimo um <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, okay, I'm going to write this project. Wait, and this one, and this one, and this one. And, <laughs> and it's like, I have too many projects. <laughs> and that's how this book was born. <laughs> um, but it's got, it, it's got lots of uh, fast, quick, easy make and takes um, for uh, demo situations where you're getting parents and child in or children involved in learning um, about uh, medieval arts and crafts. Thank you. Sure. That's all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> I wasn't sure, like I said, with the one time I taught this class, it was, um, it was uh, at, at a round table about two or three years ago and um, we could play games and stuff just so you can see the type of processes that I go through when I'm thinking about what to do for the kids. So I have um, a question, Heather. Sure. I'm oh, sorry, lead in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I answered to both. <gasps> I know. So um, a lot of times Orlando and I have children of varying ages at our house for practices because he runs mm -hmm. the youth rapier practices. And since we sure. can't meet in person right now, he's doing smaller get togethers that aren't open to everybody at the house and so something that we run into a lot of times is um, 
the younger kids, well, actually, yeah, the younger kids, there are things that they want to do that the bigger kids are doing, but they're too little to do. And so we try to redirect them and be like, okay, well, you can't do this yet, but you can do this. And they don't want to do that because they want to do what the big kids are doing. So how do you I understand that? that. <laughs> I understand that. Well, um, not knowing the, you know, it, a lot of times, even within the MOC, you have a little bit of that, especially mm -hmm. as they get, you know, to that 10, 11, and they see the teens doing a thing. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I start using the 10, 11, 12 year olds to be my runners mm, okay. or to be extra teachers. Oh, or, that's smart. Know, yeah. To let them help you with yes. what you're doing. Okay. I like that. That's great. Okay. And then um, I had one more. Oh, go ahead if you sure. want done. No, no, no. No, no. You're fine. Okay. So this one isn't an issue that I've had, but it's an issue I've seen a lot over the years, uh, you know, just of playing. And it's, so how do you deal with the fact that, say, you've got every event that you go to, there's a parent that brings a kid and drops them off the whole time and they never come and volunteer. What do you do about that? <laughs> I almost never have. I mean, I've, I've had a good. few parent. Uh, I've had a few parents volunteer. Uh, I know um, Ginger does occasionally. Uh, in fact, she was there almost all of 40th year. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, you know, the parents are volunteering other places. Right. So, you know, it's like, as long as you're volunteering, I don't care. But okay. you have, you have to be here to pick up your small. <laughs> yeah. On time. <laughs> other, other, <laughs> otherwise we need to have a discussion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Does that happen where they come late or. Yeah. Come late. I don't mind. Yeah. Um, cause, because I mean, I'll start children's activities at 9am and no, I mean, I'm late to pick them up. Oh, no, no, actually I really haven't. And usually when I get about five or 10 minutes after I grab a Herald. There you go. <laughs> that works. <laughs> Come pick up your kids. Yep. That works. Otherwise we give them uh, a lot of sugar and a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> and send them back. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> okay, makes sense. I was just something I was curious about. No problem. I mean, because it's, I mean, it is, it can be an issue. I mean, and there was a lot of things I saw when I went to Gulf Wars. And I didn't stick around children's activities too much because, well, um, I do a lot more. <laughs> yeah that was that 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 year was interesting for for gulf wars it was what three years ago now two years ago now i can't remember mm -hmm. my days are running together oh yeah <laughs> i hear you there um but it was it was interesting we uh had a gathering activity that kind of lasted all morning oh yeah the whole two hour block and I'm just like no we have a gathering activity and then we actually do something else yeah <laughs> yeah huh interesting oh no Ryan hang on <laughs> no problem my, my my earpiece is having an issue uh oh <laughs> It's beeping at me. It's right over here, sweetie. Um. <laughs> but, uh, 
But yeah, 40th, uh, 40th year went really well. I mean, we did have some gathering activities and we did all kinds of activities. We had a treasure hunt and it was, it, you know, you know, uh, uh, Lilius said pretty much, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> that definitely helps. So yeah, I guess talk to us about some of your favorite activities that you've done with the kids. Ooh, favorite activities I've done. Um, hmm. Well, um, well, there was that, uh, we've done a, um, snowball fight at Yule. That cool. was fun. Kids really enjoyed that, especially when we used the marshmallows. We had them build, uh, graham cracker houses or castles and, um, got destroyed them with these monster marshmallows. I think they ate the marshmallows more than destroyed the. Mm -hmm. I can see that. <laughs> destroyed the castle. <laughs> but that was a lot of fun. Cool. Uh, we've also done uh, graham cracker houses as like a subtlety contest. Uh, one year we had subtlety so Stonehenge, graham cracker Stonehenge. That was really kind of cool. Oh, neat. Um, really, I think today date um 40th year all of 40th year it was a lot of fun uh-oh i may lose you <laughs> uh-oh battery on my computer's running low uh-oh <laughs> <laughs> okay Oops. well aha uh -huh, ryan to save the day yay <sighs> Awesome. <laughs> I'm glad I have a technical part. guru. Right? Exactly. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's see. Yeah, all of 40th year. All of 40th year. We had so much fun. And I think the fairy ball was the, the biggest, the, the most fun. So what do you do when you're getting ready? And we uh, made masks and cool. um, That's awesome. I had painted with glow in the dark paint some rocks and the kids thought that was absolutely fabulous. Awesome. <laughs> that they gl glowed in the dark. <laughs> um, uh, they also did fairy crowns and um, made felt hats and they had a they had a lot of fun. Awesome. So um, when you're getting ready to go to an event and do MOC activities, like what do you do? Talk us through your process of what you do to prepare for that. Yeah, for 40th year, Amazon was my friend. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with five hundred dollars, it was just like, okay, I want to do these, and then I budget it all out, and then start looking for the best prices I could find. Um, you know, uh, in the book I wrote, I actually have, you know, um, a budget sheet um, and how to budget out, you know, how much you're spending per kid, um, you know, just all sorts of different things that are really useful um, as an MOC, um, you know, how to basically how to autocrat an event. Um, uh, you're basically autocratting the kids. Um, and there's nothing that says as an MOC, you can't pull in outside teachers. Um, my experience in the last 10 years, it wasn't hard to find teachers at first. But then it got to be, um, you know, hey, can you do this? How many kids are we talking? It's like, well, I'm not leaving you alone in the room. Um, how about no? It's like, okay, fine. I'll learn how to do it myself. Um, <laughs> I became Henny Penny or uh, no, it was Little Red Hen. <laughs> um 
Uh, not really sure what else. What? Like I said, uh, normally we'd be up playing games, you know, you know, learning some of the games that, you know, I've, um, you know, I, I've made myself um, put together. Um, and if you don't have a games tote, you need a games tote. Uh, you said you uh, wrote a book. Do you have that somewhere where you could share it uh, to um, the group? Just full of, you know, like chess and backgammon and, and, and things like that. Um, because, I mean, one, that's great for the older kids. Because if they're not really interested in what you're showing the younger kids they can pull out a period game and play that um and that's a, that's been a lifesaver you know many 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 times um you might also even think about um uh one event we did uh the kids there were only like two or three of them and they were older so they would just like okay well i'll start a story and then they just kept going around and around and around and the, the story got weird and fantastic and it was a lot of fun um you know um i'm sorry if i'm rambling <laughs> no you're fine um and any questions can you from hear my us? ramblings? <sighs> Leading, can you hear us? Uh oh. I don't think you can hear us. Uh I I think <laughs> it died on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ryan's in the process of fixing it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any signal flags to use. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and my sign language is really bad. So. Oh, mine too. Like we I could write on a difficulty. piece of paper and hold it up, but that's about it. <laughs> <clears throat> so while we're waiting, I've noticed that I as, as I have gotten older, my hair goes crazy whenever I'm on video chat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a thing. <laughs> it happens. Can you hear us, Heather? I don't think she can. No. Nope. Yeah, at first it sounded like she was answering my questions because they were close enough in line. And mm -hmm. then the last one, I was like, mm, she can't hear me. <laughs> really good. <laughs> so on a totally different tangent, I don't know why it is, but whenever I'm on one of these calls, I don't do it for work, although I've been tempted many times. I just want to do the Roxbury fog. <laughs> And play That's the music funny. in the background or do it the opposite way. You know. Right. Too funny. <laughs> I noticed your cat was up there behind you earlier. <laughs> yeah, that's my cat. That's that's um, Zena, warrior, warrior kitty. <laughs> he, he's the female in charge here. Or totally. cat in charge, I should say. <laughs> right, right. <clears throat> oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> Okay. We're back. Can you hear us yes. now? Yes. Can hey, you hear me hey. now? Yes. We, yeah. we could hear you the whole time, but you couldn't hear us. And it was really funny because I was asking you questions and for a while it sounded like you were answering them. And then oh. I asked you another question and I was like, oh, she can't hear me. <laughs> so. Um, so the yeah. last question I asked you was, you said you wrote a book about this. Do you have that somewhere where you could share it to the group? Um, yeah, yes. Um, it should be on the Wiesenfeuer 
um, youth page. Okay. Can you just post the link to it later? Yeah. Uh, like I said, you, you can always uh, message me and I'll send you the links. Okay. Awesome. That would be great. You want us to message you in the chat or message you separately? Uh, message me separately because mm -hmm. I, my computer is all the way across the room. <laughs> She's Heather Harrison on Facebook if you're okay. not friends or if you don't know that. <laughs> We're not friends, but that is about to change. Yay. Okay, I guess I'm going to get an influx now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, you just got one. Okay. So one other thing I asked you about when you couldn't hear me was uh, what you do, like what's your process when you know you're going to uh, host MOC activities at an event? Like how do you prepare for that? How do you get ready before you get to the site? Well, um, a lot of what I do is, okay, I, you know, find out from the autocrats, you know, if there's a theme, um, if there is, then I, you know, try to structure the uh, uh, activities around that theme. Um, and um, uh, like with 40th year, I pretty much had a lot of leeway as far as what I could do. Um, but I've, uh, I've got braggarts war coming up, maybe, I don't know. Um, and so getting in contact with the the autocrats and saying okay what's you know what's the theme well the theme for braggarts is these four how four houses are warring and it's like oh harry potter i can do this mm -hmm. um, <laughs> um so you know in thinking about that we're gonna have a ser sorting ceremony maybe we'll see um <laughs> we'll see if we even have the event uh we might do like a potions class um but you know, earning points towards maybe a big prize. I don't know. Uh, I haven't really gotten that far into it yet with, because that all happened before COVID. Um, right. But with 40th year, you know, there were, uh, uh, the uh, Thursday was talk, happened, just happened to be talk like a pirate day. Well, everything was pirate themed, um, you know, from building the ships to learning about knots to learning about, you know, different types of ships, uh, learning about pirates in general. Um, uh, so uh, there would be that. Um, and then, you know, kind of tailoring each day to what it, you know, you know, maybe a certain theme. Um, mm -hmm. So I, it starts months in advance. Oh yeah, of what? I believe it. Mm -hmm. And if you ask my family, I, there isn't a moment I am not thinking about the children um, and what I can do to, you know, make this more interesting or, you know, that's something fun or um, um, learning a new craft just to, you know, be able to teach it to the kids. Um, yeah, uh, what you don't see is the entire mess <laughs> <laughs> of uh, of videoing, uh, you know, doing all the videos that I've been doing for um, uh, the learning library. Um, and yeah, that's been um, really cool. What you've done with that is really awesome. That's what been a lot of fun. And my youngest son has been doing all the edits for it. And it's just, you know, he's done a phenomenal job on that. Um, uh, but, you know, um, it, you know, when I, you know, talk to the autocrats, I, you know, find out what my budget is, you know, <laughs> how far can I go? <laughs> how crazy do you want me to get? Cause I can do crazy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, a lot of times, you know, I just pull from my own craft stores just because it's like, 
Oh, look, another craft. Oh, look, shiny. Um, and I'm sure you get I, a discount too, so that helps, oh, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> I love my discount. <laughs> Uh, that would be, you know, one of those things is like, I hope I, I, I hope I can stay well enough to stay with Hobby Lobby. Mm -hmm. Um, I totally get that. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things where, uh, I start pricing out what I want to do. And then, you know, if it gets too expensive or too complicated, Little ones aren't going to be able to do it. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, what kid doesn't like to hammer things? So there, you know, we could do, you know, uh, there are, you know, bulk kits. I, in fact, I got some from the dollar store, you know, uh, like putting a birdhouse together. They absolutely cool. enjoyed that. That's awesome. I had some. I even had someone want to get really creative with it. Um, just like, okay, we're building a three-story birdhouse. Um, um, but, the, you, know, you know, first it's deciding what I'm going to do and then budgeting it out and then, um, you know, managing all the supplies. I use a tote system mm -hmm. where everything for that craft goes into a tote so it's not in a box in the shed at home 50 miles away um, <laughs> that's um, smart makes a lot of sense <laughs> yes uh, and everything is labeled you know, I have a tote of general supplies like scissors and, you know, all the scissors go in this tote. All the um, uh, hole punches go in this tote, markers, you know, and those go with me to every event. Um, so if I need them, they're always there. Um, I also have an administrative tote where we have, I have my sign-in sheets and, um, uh, you know, name badges and what have you, because especially like a big event like 40th year, you know, having a name badge, you know, helped an awful lot. And I even did that for the kids until I learned their names. Um, yeah. Because we had kids from out of kingdom, kids I didn't know, you know, so, you know, having, having that available to me, you mm -hmm. know, and any guest teachers, it made, it made life a little bit more simple. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Any other questions? I don't really have a question, but I need advice on something. Sure. I am technically my Shire's MOC, but I haven't been warranted yet. I haven't heard anything from the Kingdom MOC since January. I submitted my paperwork then. Oh, what no. What should I do now? <laughs> <laughs> I know there's been issues. So I, uh, yeah. I've talked to my, my Shire members, but I'm like, I don't know what to do now, guys. Right. Um, uh, do you have a regional? Where, where are you? I'm are in you? Wichita Falls. I'm in Bradley. Oh, okay. okay. So you're, uh, so you're, region. you're northern. Yeah. Oh, we don't have, we don't have a regional. That might be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is a problem. <laughs> that is a bit of a problem. Um, well, I'm, I'm, I think our current Kingdom MOC, because I've tried to get in contact with her about um, uh, Namron's MOC, mm -hmm. uh, saying that she needed warranting as well. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we've got Roundtable coming up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they're offering the MOC warranting class. I am in the process of writing one. <laughs> it's not ready yet. <laughs> I've been working on it for a month. <laughs> um, um, I so and I don't know who's going who's submitted to uh, take the Kingdom MOC's place because I think her tenure is up. 
I did see that on Facebook. They were looking for applicants. <laughs> When so, was that? Oh, was that may, this may I make a suggestion? It was last month. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. So, Rachel, may I make a suggestion? <laughs> that is, since the MOC falls under the purview as a deputy to the Seneschal, mm -hmm. there is a Northern Regional Seneschal, okay? Avery. And you can have, what I would suggest is you copy by email um, your Seneschal and the Regional Seneschal state what you're trying to do and things should start moving very quickly. Because he's, of, been, he's been contacted already and- um, Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then, then, okay, so, uh, and, and this is, sorry, this is from an old king to the central. So, you're okay. he contacted you're the good. local, he contacted the regional and nothing's happening. It's time to take it all the way up all you're wanting to is be warranted. You're not asking for anything unusual. No, I need a background again. check. Yeah, I'm a teacher. And, yeah, so you, I think I'll pass. You, so <laughs> if you've already done that, you know, I'm sure Avery could, 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 you know, take care of this in about 15 seconds or one quick phone call. That's all it would take and it would be done. Um, and I know he has nothing but time on his hands. That was sarcasm, by the way. That was Just sarcasm, like by the way. But um, you know, if you've already done local and you've already done regional, and there and enough time has passed, and I would say give it thirty days. But if it's already that time has already passed and nothing has happened, there you go. Then it's time to escalate up the ladder. You're just trying to volunteer for a job, and right. the volunteers are are key to our organization and it should we should not make it difficult for volunteers to volunteer for an office that need that requires a background check because not everybody wants to volunteer for for a uh, a, a position that needs a background check they just don't want to so no um, they don't yeah so <laughs> one, I, applaud, I, my background I applaud checks you. I, I do I, I applaud you. I, I don't I don't know you well at all. I know you from Bradley because I've been listening. Um, but the, if you've already done local and regional, it's time to escalate it. And and if you want to, you can you can tell Avery Master Richard Fairborn says that I need to contact you because I can't do anything <laughs> back. So I, I, I'll, I'll I'm willing to for Avery to come back to me and say, Richard, what did you do? And I'll be happy to answer him. So. Just uh, do that. I'm sure okay. do that because it's not, it should not be that hard for any officer to volunteer because I'm sure there's, yeah. there, there's tons I of people wanting if, to have your office. <laughs> in all honesty, since I've been an MOC for 10 years and I've been the Northern Regional, shouldn't I be allowed to warrant people? <laughs> Uh, technically, the warranting comes from is done the, every six the months. The kingdom or the regional, yeah. Yeah, so it have yeah. to be done by one of them. So, yeah. but if there's no northern regional, then you'd have to reach out to the kingdom. And if the kingdom's not being responsive, then following the chain of command, the, right. the, yeah. the boss of the kingdom deputy in this case would be the kingdom central. So, if you jump through all the hoops, jump through the next hoop, and um, you didn't hear this from me. You can always <laughs> contact the SCA level Minister of Children. Um, you know, if you want to, you're not trying to get anybody in trouble. You're trying to just get sure uh, a volunteer uh, warranted, and you're willing to go through all the hoops. You're trying, and unfortunately, they keep moving the the hoop in front of you every time you try to jump through. And that should not happen. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm going to make a confession here. It was about four years. I'd been an MOC for about four years before I was warranted. Oh, and that's, that's a problem too. Yeah, that's a problem too. <laughs> so, you know, it's that. just... <laughs> but, There's only one kid in my shire. I mean, yeah. they're doing still, it because they need matter. one. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not yeah. a priority. <laughs> so... It doesn't, but see, the thing is, is as uh, Heather has already said, you could be tagged by other groups who don't have an MOC to host yeah. their activities. And mm -hmm. the fact that you're warranted 
uh, or could be warranted and would be warranted, hopefully, that, that makes you something that's unusual because not every group has someone that wants to be an MOC or, you know, or, or not wants, desires to be an MOC. Yeah, no. nobody's my level of crazy. <laughs> oh, we all are, Heather. It's just different levels of crazy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I work with my children every day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all have our own level of crazy in different areas. So, all right, I'll go back to mute. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, thank you for the no. advice. That's yeah. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. I would like something, I would like to get warranted sooner rather than later. <laughs> Yeah, I need to check with Jana because she was uh, uh, wanting to be warranted and, you know, not being the Northern Regional. Right. Um, I can't do it. Um, and with Kingdom MOC, not really in the picture. Um, yeah, it sounds like things are slipping through the cracks, so. Yeah. And there's a, another person in my shower who wants to be the Knights Marshal, and we haven't heard anything about from oh from no that. so of course <laughs> like okay cool I'm not sure what to do next <laughs> i know More it's advice, been difficult you, you email and contact pug he'll take yeah. care of it he really will he's a great guy earl marshall he's, he is he will yeah, yeah. it's been difficult though i know because mm -hmm. i'm the current kingdom missile marshal because like for me my deputies really want to see the people that they're warranting mm -hmm. in action and yeah. they haven't been able to, they haven't been able to go to a target archery practice or a thrown weapons practice. And so they're, I'm oh, telling yeah. them to reach out to people in the area and say, okay, do you know this person? Have they run practices? Are they safe? Would you warrant them? Mm -hmm. And if the people, you know, in that area, that they contact say yes, then I'm like, okay, they're vouching for them. We'll go ahead and do it. But if they say, oh, well, no, I've never seen them run a practice and I wouldn't know if they're safe or not, or if they know what they're doing. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but you're going to have to wait until COVID slows down a little bit and we can come and make sure that you're safe and you know what you're doing before we warrant you. So. Sure. Yeah. But different situation but similar because oh sure yeah you know <laughs> yeah did anybody else have any questions about MOC stuff it looks like John does yeah <clears throat> um and kind of the reason I'm here tonight is more because I'm uh got some events that I want to plan and what's currently on my mind is Yule Revel and what kind of activities uh, you could have available or would want to plan for for uh, uh, for uh, a Yule Revel. Okay. Well, um, does your Yule Revel have a theme? Uh, not yet. And I'm looking, bear in mind, I, I do things like a year or two in advance. Sure. I, uh, I would, I would like to do like a Cavalier Christmas, but uh, uh, let's let's just go with that. Though, just just to get things moving along. Okay. Well, we'll <clears throat> say Cavalier Christmas. And first off, you start with research, 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 research. And I and, and I'm not kidding. I I go through. Google searches on just about everything, you know, what can, you know, what kinds of crafts would that entail? Um, you know, and you also kind of have to decide, do you have um, uh, youth championships that, that take place at a Yule Revel? I mean, no, I know at ours, we have um, youth ANS and youth Bardic. Um, so, you know, are you wanting to incorporate something like that in, in, into that, um, uh, you know, researching what Cavaliers do, you know, um, that would be, you know, and, um, introducing that to the kids and, um, you know, 
it's more of, I mean, kids sit in school all day, every day, except for Saturday and Sunday. So they want to get up, they want to move around, they want to, you know, they don't want to do schoolwork. And yes, you have a curriculum, but you, it's um, fun with a purpose. So, you know, you tailor it around that where they're experimenting and, and, and crafting, not, you know, uh, doing more than just coloring sheets. Um, because you, even that gets boring for an adult. Um, but, you know, looking at what, um, you know, are you going to be doing it a, a all day with the kids? Are you going to be doing it, you know, just in the morning or just in the afternoon? Um, uh, you know, kind of plan your day out, you know, and, you know, as you're researching, you know, what crafts, what, uh, competitions can be done. Um, and then plan your budget around that. And, you know, you know, kind of have an idea of what your budget is and then, um, uh, uh, you know, get the final numbers from the autocrat. Does that answer your question at all? Uh, or? kind of, I guess I, maybe I need to get your book. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I, it's not something that, I, I mean, I'd probably need to get whoever the minister of children is here in Bringwalad to, to kind of lead the charge on that. I'm looking at it more from, okay, logistically putting an event together, what I need to have to make sure that, I mean, cause we got people with families here, lots of them. And so. Oh, we, sure. <clears throat> so yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely you're talk to the MOC and if you don't have one there, maybe you have one somewhere close that right. can come and help. Yeah. Okay, guys, well, we are at seven after the hour. So if nobody has any other questions, I would be willing to let Miss Leadon go for the evening. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Leadon. Sure. Thank, thank you, sure. Leadon. I appreciate you so much. Uh, this is something that I feel like people don't get to talk and reach out much so oh yeah very helpful to have this kind of resource. yeah the moc is kind of it kind of always stays in the background yeah, <laughs> if she's doing her job you don't see the children um <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right well i hope everybody has a good rest of your evening you guys right. too bye, -bye guys night y'all bye, bye.